What is it about children? Last night, I was at a Super Bowl party that our church was throwing. I brought my son with me, who's only seven. There was a three-year-old little boy named Zachary. He came and sat down beside my son, and I watched them. And my son and this three-year-old boy, they talked and they played, and um, there was no officiousness. My son was white, he was black, my son was seven, he was maybe three, but it didn't matter. They played together, and they seemed to have an automatic, a natural affection for each other. Something happens to us as we grow older. We become adults and our hearts become full of pride and arrogance. We become jaded, we become cynical. We start making judgments about everything and everyone. With our lips we say we don't judge a book by its cover, but we do. We teach our minds for years and years to judge by outward appearance. We unconsciously, without even realizing it, look at someone and decide what kind of person they are and whether or not we want to talk with them or relate to them or even sit next to them based on the clothing they wear or the color of their skin or their face or whether or not they have a funny accent or the way they talk or the country they're from. But children, children don't do that. You ever look at small children, the way they play together, their skin color, they don't really care about the funny accents. They don't notice the differences so much as, as simply getting along, loving each other. And then I see children as they get older, well, they begin to pick up the prejudices of their parents and they begin to make fun of other children. And they grow older into adolescence and they become teenagers and then they become cruel. But small children, I've watched them for years and I don't see that and the way they relate with each other, and, and, and the way they treat each other. Just blind acceptance. And I think that's what Jesus Christ is asking of us. The Word of God says, man judges by the outward appearance, and God judges by what's in the heart. And, and God wants us to be like Him. He wants us to grow up into that image. Well, sometimes growing up is growing down. I've heard a lot of people teach and preach on this passage, and it's almost cliche for me to say that well, the Bible is telling us to be childlike, but not childish. Well, I think we all know that. <laughs> but technically, how do we implement it? Why did Jesus choose those exact words? Why did Jesus say that children are greatest in the kingdom of God? Was he trying to offend us? Was he trying to get our attention? Was he trying to disturb something inside of us? Maybe to put a mirror in front of us and show us something about ourselves that we ought to change. The emphasis is not on we should not be childish, we should be childlike. That's not how Jesus put it. Those weren't the words that Jesus used. The people that Jesus taught 2,000 years ago were predominantly illiterate people. They couldn't even read or write. But he didn't try to dumb it down. He didn't oversimplify it. He didn't use the words that we use today. Yet we take away from his teaching. We manipulate it. We twist it. We change it. No, the exact words he used 2,000 years ago are the words that we should use today. Why did he pick those words? Why did he say that children are greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Why did he say that unless we can humble ourselves as a little child, we will not enter the kingdom of God? Let's contemplate that. Let's pray about that. Let's meditate on that. Because we need to understand it. Our eternity is at stake. You know, unless we are broken and contrite, unless we humble ourselves, how are we ever going to stand before God? Because our Master, Jesus Christ, the Son of God Himself, became a servant. He gave up all of the things that were rightly His, the Word tells us. He surrendered them and came down to this earth and dwelt among us. And what did He do? He took upon Himself the nature of a servant. He took off his clothes and he bent down on his knees and he took a rag and water and he washed the dirt off his disciples' feet. And then he turned to, to his disciples and he said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. A servant is not above his master. If I, your Lord, have done these things, then how should you treat one another? And we get it twisted. We made a ritual out of it. We have foot washing ceremonies. 
But that's not the point. Washing the dirt off someone's feet, that's immaterial, that doesn't matter, that's not important. Why do we always make rituals out of things? We're missing the point. The point is, every day we should walk around with an attitude of service on our heart. That may go against, that may be contrary to everything that this world teaches us, to everything that we've been taught. You know, we've been taught if we don't bite and claw our way to the top, we won't get there. We've been taught if we don't promote ourselves and exalt ourselves, then we'll just be a nobody. But you've got to decide, my friend, who are you going to obey? Who are you going to follow? Are you going to follow that natural wisdom of the world that says that? Or are you going to obey the real Jesus Christ? Because the real Jesus doesn't say what they're saying. The real Jesus says, humble yourself, abase yourself, put yourself down low. And then when God sees it, he'll lift you up when the time is right. That's what the real Jesus says. He doesn't say what they say. The real Jesus says, don't seek power over other people. Jesus says, if you want to be the greatest of all, you got to be a servant. The first will be last and the last will be first. So who are you going to follow? Who are you going to believe? What they say or what Jesus says?